Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today's worship will be guided by a morning prayer found on page 35 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand if you are able. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The opening hymn, 338, no, 388, 388. magnify the Lord. The words are on the sheet, if you have it. It's not all the prayers, you know, you're not following. Page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God. By whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ. By whose rising we are set free. 
Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Let us celebrate the feast not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God in Christ, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. One moment. Please stand. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The psalm. The Psalms appointed for this morning is Psalm 22, to be found on page 493, reading verses 22 to 30, reading alternately, pausing at the asterisk. Praise the Lord, you that fear him, stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. Glory to God, 
let us be hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleeps in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. Together, they shall come and make known to our people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, so, and long be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in Genesis 17, verses 1 to 7 and 15 to 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall, you shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of, mul of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to God, to be God to you and your, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife. You shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Benedictus on page 40. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, 
to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the second lesson. The second lesson is taken from Romans chapter 4, verse 13 to 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the hearers, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he in lived, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the bareness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Here ended the reading of the word of God. Thanks. Thanks. For the gradual hymn, we will sing the song Above All by Michael Smith on the song sheets.
reading from the Word of God as written in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through to 39. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said this plainly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. And he called to him the multitude with his disciples and said to them, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is shamed of me, rather ashamed of me and of my words in, the, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord.
Please be seated. We'll now sing the meditation song, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. I would like to take a moment to pause because we heard some sad news this morning, the passing of Herbert, Hubert Lawrence, and I just to pause for five minutes in recognition of this soul. So just take five minutes to just be still. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. That was one of the verses from our meditation song. But as we come in to worship this morning, I'd like to also pray that our gracious and merciful God, who is the root of the spirit of Ubuntu, to help us to embrace and hold fast to your ways. May our conversations and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Since this is the second Sunday in Lent, we would have already heard or been reminded of the evidence of Jesus spending 40 days in the desert. And this experience has summoned the memories of the 40 years the Israelites wandered in the desert after being led out of slavery in Egypt. Similarly, the 40 days and nights was the period the prophet Elijah also journeyed in the desert, making his way to Horeb, the mountain of God, where he was attended to by the angel of the Lord. And I think I can safely say that we believe that Lent is a time for personal reflection and change, much more than a time to not eat meat and then to eat meat again after Easter Day or on Easter Day, don't we? Yes. Psalm 22 was all about this, the big plea for deliverance. It did not start so well at verse 2, where 
It said, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. Happily, it turned out that God has been faithful. He will not hide his face in the times of our distress. So the poor will be satisfied, they won't go hungry. This led our psalmist to continue, to, to suggest that we should continue to praise him. We heard of Abraham's circumstances in Genesis and in Romans of his faith in God. He had to leave his country, remember? He left behind all he had. Or he took his possessions, rather, but he left his satisfied place, his comfort zone, so to speak. And the covenant relationship between them, himself and God, the great promise to make him the father of so many nations. The gospel reading of Mark, chapter 8, brought us to different methods of working of miracles by Jesus. Even, and you know the Bible also records the bad stuff, even to the lack of understanding of the disciples. Then, finally, pointing out the way of the cross. Today, I would like us to have conversations around this troublesome verse, Mark chapter 8, verse 35. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. By the way, I meant us to have conversations because we are going to be talking amongst ourselves. We're going to be talking to each other. We're going to be sharing as the Lord leads in our conversations amongst ourselves. Then, then briefly to share with the rest of us what the Lord has inspired, not what you think, what the Lord has inspired you to say to us on these particular questions or point. We are all seeking to know God for ourselves, right? Of course. But before we do that, I wish to highlight just four points from our passage today or passage of concentration, Mark 8. The multitude. Jesus had these crowds of people that either followed him or he was in a location where there were people and children, family around. And the funny thing was that he encouraged conversation with even the people who had evil intentions. Malice aforethought, the lawmakers would say. Other persons were there for what they could get, the links and the bling, the excitement. Some would actually be healed, both physically and from mental stress. So they both had physical ailments, physical stresses, and mental stress. Hands up those who know that Jesus can relieve you and heal you of mental stress. All right. And B, he also spoke of the eminent death, his eminent death, the suffering, the rejection, his dying on the cross. And did the disciples just take it laid back like that? You heard what Peter did in this chapter. He called Jesus over and admonished him. This cannot happen, man. Stop saying this. We can imagine Peter saying this to Jesus. And see, Jesus gave a warning, maybe a three-part warning in this chapter. If you are really going to follow me, know that you will have to take up your own cross. So it is plainly said that it is not going to be easy because carrying a cross, even looking at it, not look so easy. D, Jesus also spoke of losing one's life for his sake. 
He spoke of the consequences of losing one's soul, being ashamed to own Jesus Christ. Jesus indicated that this act of being humiliated, embarrassed about Jesus, would result in the same treatment towards us at the end, when he comes to be with his Father in heaven. Now this is the first stage of the conversation concerning this troublesome verse. For whoever will save his life shall lose it, but whoever lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Mark 8, 35. Tell me, didn't it trouble you? No? It troubled me. Well, let us see how our spirits are thinking and feeling. Because we already know how Jesus saw it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, my AYF members are going to be helping me to settle you into four groups. As you look at three questions. One, in order to save ourselves from embarrassment, possible rejection, we keep away from witnessing, mission walks. Do we converse with the multitude? The set that embraced the scribes and the Pharisees who sought to blemish him. Engage our politicians. Do we engage regular people? Or is it only the people we like and know that we engage? Two, those who followed Jesus underwent difficulties. No food. Three days they had no food. Loss of sleep. Among other things that ease the body. Does true zeal for the Lord destroy hardships, counteracts hardships in the way of duty? And three, we must not dread the loss of our lives, provided it be in the cause of Christ. Do you agree or you disagree? And all of these you explain in two minutes because we don't have the whole morning. The fourth point for the fourth group, you're not going to look at all four questions, one question per group. The last one says, what do men or we do to save our or their lives to gain the world? And you give some examples. So our AYF members are going to assist me in getting you into four groups. The choir can join the congregation as we have this discussion. I'm sharing my 20 minutes with you. So you have eight minutes to talk and two minutes to deliver. All right? Thank you. Thy word is a... Come join the congregation. Light. You can turn to each other. I can't see the four groups right now. I want to match. Choir not joining any group. No? Mm? We only need four groups. So, the questions are going to be given to you. Um, question one says, well, I have four before me first. What do men and we do to save our lives? Um, Dana, what do men do to save their own lives or, our, or we do to save our lives to gain the world? And you give, thank you, and you give examples. Three, we must not dread the loss of our lives provided it be in the cause of Christ. Do you agree or disagree? And you explain that in two minutes. Two, those who followed Christ underwent difficulties. No food, no sleep, among other things that ease the body, you know, those nice things that we have in, in our time. Does true zeal 
for the Lord destroy hardships, counteract hardships in the way of duty. And number one, in order to save ourselves from embarrassment or rejection, possible rejection, you keep away from doing witnessing and mission works. Do we ever converse with the multitude, the set that embraced the scribes and the Pharisees who sought to blemish Jesus? Or we engage our politicians, regular people, or we just stick to people we like and know to engage those persons. So your eight minutes starts now, and I had asked for a timekeeper. Good. And after your eight minutes, well, that little time you're going to choose a leader, which the AYFs are supposed to help you to find, and a scribe. So that two minutes, you can report. Okay, so it's a shared effort. Talk amongst yourselves. The choir not talking to nobody. You're not minister too. Are we having a difficulty with any of the questions? So show your hands and I'll come over. So everybody's cool with the questions? Right. Yes, sir? You have a puzzled look on your face. May I help you? You're cool. Mr. Mitchell, need any help?
We have one minute on the clock remaining. Half a minute to go. Right, Yvette? Thy word is truly a lantern to our feet. It is. So we can start now with the reporting. And I'm going to start with group with the group with number four. All right. So for So our question for group four, 
What do men or we do to save their or our lives to gain the world? So from our discussion... I'm just going to interrupt a minute. You know, we might be having visitors here. And I'm, I'm, I'm a part-time visitor, so I'm going to ask anyone who comes to report to say who you are and where you belong or what group you join. <laughs> I am Kiara Shannon. I represent the young people. Group, yes. That's, that's good. From group four, right. So, our discussion, from our discussion, the what you do to what men do to save their lives to gain the world uh, we have jealousy this uh, envy of others for what they have greed was also one that came for this came from our discussion so you cannot satisfy what you have which leads you to commit unscrupulous deeds so you kill steal um, to attain wealth power or fame Idolatry is another one that came from our discussion. So having false gods, and we, we know from scripture, that Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Either you serve him or you serve the devil. That's really it. Um, so yes, that's what came, for our, came from our discussion. Thank you. <laughs> Kept your two minutes. Okay, so we'll go to group three now. Oops. Good morning again. I'm representing group three in the back, the naughty corner usually. And our question was, oh, I'm Benny Watson. <laughs> and so it asked us to briefly discuss in our groups the question of we must not dread the loss of our lives provided it be in the cause of Christ. Do you agree or disagree? And the general discussion suggested that in principle, we agree, but we also recognize that as man, as the disciples were sometimes weak in their faith, we're also prone to similar weaknesses. Nonetheless, if we have faith, the essence of things unseen, and we accept the principles in John 12, 24, then we recognize that we must part with the ways of the flesh in order to truly die in the world so that we can live on in Christ. So for us, the discussion centered around the fact that Christ himself was an example, died on the cross so that we could live on and likewise Though we won't be perfect at it and we'll continue to make mistakes for as much as possible, we will daily continue to sacrifice as much as possible so that we can live on in faith and live on forever. Thank you for the discipline we're showing. The two-minute mark is met. So can we now go to group two? Good morning, friends. My name is Trisha Mitchell, and our question for group two is, those who followed Jesus underwent difficulties. No food for three days and loss of sleep, among other things that ease the body. Does true zeal for the Lord destroy hardships, counteracts the hardships in the way of duty? In our discussions, we said that our zeal basically is a burning passion, enthusiasm, and desire to serve the Lord. It's a will and determination. 
So our response to the hardships that we face depends on our perspective, how we view or focus what we are going through. So if you focus on the Lord, you see strength and not hardship. So it can help us to seek the Lord more. Through knowing the Lord more, it gives us strength to endure the hardships. So as we deal with our hardships, we are to be reminded that we are not fighting for victory, but from a point of victory. So our battles belong to God. So we just need to stand firm on his promises. Amen. Friends, our sermon is coming through, isn't it? Yes. Of course. And group one. Good morning. My name is Ashley Ellison. I'm from Group One. Okay, so our question it began with a statement. In order to save ourselves from embarrassment, possible rejection, you keep away from witnessing and mission walks. Now the question was asking, do we converse with the multitude? The set that embrace the scribes and the Pharisees who sought to blemish him, or do we engage our politicians or engage regular people? The last part of the question is, is it, is it only the people we like and know that we engage? So the question is basically asking about witnessing. Do we witness and how do we witness? When do we witness? So from our discussion, we were talking about what exactly witnessing is. So witnessing is not just talking, it's the lifestyle that you have. So how someone sees your actions, that's the first thing that you, that you can talk about when you're doing witnessing. So me, for example, if I am very happy and I spread the gospel, if I use Bible verses throughout my day, if I'm always joyful, even though I'm stressed, that is witnessing. So, the question now, do we witness? Yes, we witness. But we usually try to witness the people in similar walks of life. So, persons at school, persons in your workplace, persons at church. We don't really go out of our way to witness. We just use our lifestyle to witness. But if an opportunity is created at church, for example, a prayer walk, we go on one. We can also use crusades, gospel concerts, church services as a safe space for witnessing. And what we noticed from the conversation was that we tend to avoid witnessing to people. So we used to say, yeah, man, I'll, somebody tell you about the situation. Yeah, man, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Or you tell them, oh, next week I'll talk. But, you know, we need, to be, we need to do the right thing even in uncomfortable situations and witness the people, invite them to church physically, send them the link, or, yes, that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I heard some things. I heard about witnessing in safe spaces, not sure I understand, in safe spaces to witness. And the right thing to do is not to avoid witnessing. And we do, witnesses through, we, we do witness through our lifestyle and joyfully going along even though you're under. I also heard that we agree to the point of what was their agreement? That we must not dread the loss of our lives. Mm. But to go by the principle of parting ways with our flesh, and Christ was a perfect example. I also heard that some of the ways that we could save or choose to save ourselves and practice the ease of life or the ease of the body is the way we envy other people how we go after things that are not of God, and we do unscrupulous things. 
So those were some of the things I heard. I hope the Spirit was also teaching you and telling you something of what this scripture, this troublesome scripture, was saying to us. Oh, that's what you were saying. Oh, I agree. Understood. Correction made. We must be concerned. Dread the loss of our souls. We must. The evidence has shown that not all wealthy people, people with the money, are happy and experience the joy of the Lord. We see that embracing the things of this world without Christ will not serve to preserve our life. So think carefully about the choice of staying away from delving into God's word for yourself. Do not just depend on the radio or the link, but do your own study of God's word. Another thing I noticed about this verse was that it suggested that life would be better in Christ. You got that? Nobody got that. Okay, so I'm alone. You got that? Okay. It means for me that marriages, marriages, which I know nothing about, would become more solid when the vows are perceived in the way God intended. The relationship of the wife and husband should be as Christ is and always will be towards the church. The connection doesn't end. It doesn't stop. The love is always there, even when we know the right things. And for business, it will be based not only on economic principles, but would take corporate responsibility seriously and regard equality in the workplace. You know, that, that made news the other day. Laws passed the other day concerning that very thing with women in the workplace. And that would be part of God's plan. For whoever puts his or her life goals, desires, fantasies above and image, because we into image in this century, above all of what God requires of him or her, will have a different end than expected for his or her soul as far as this scripture is concerned. Jesus has said, whoever loses life, put away worldly things, put away fleshly things, and search after spiritual encounters, hold his own righteousness and privileges in contempt, and be consumed and energized by Jesus, will experience an enriched life will save his or, or, or her soul. Amen. Please stand for the Apostles' Creed on page 42. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffrage be. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us a clean heart. Creating us clean hearts, O oh God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Second Sunday in Lent, page 163. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our intercessory prayers for this morning will be guided by Form C, found on page 108. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We'll now have the senior citizens' prayer. We'll now have the AY of prayer. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wound, 
to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we forever. Amen. Collect for Sundays on page 46. O oh God, you make us glad with the weak remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, O oh Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the, week may, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The hymn for the offertory is on this, the sheet, Jesus is the Answer. Page 126, part A, the response, all things come from you, O Lord, 
and for your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The hymn for the children, for their blessing, CPWI 667, 667. of God cover me cover me cover me peace of God cover me through the storm cover me
Please stand for the prayer of dedication, page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons. In the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or conceive, by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in, the Christ, and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for the notices. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Peace of God cover me through the storm. Only in you are we safe. Only in you we have peace. Only in you I am secure. We are secure. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so welcome to those here at this morning. Beautiful morning. I see some persons we haven't seen for a long time for that section here. Welcome, Mr. and Mrs. Ho. Um, welcome to those who are online and those who are visiting with us for the first time. Are the, is there anyone visiting with us for the first time? Okay, please stand so that we and tell us a little bit about yourself. We invited you. Hi. Melissa. Melissa. Okay, <laughs> and I see this young lady, this one is connected to you. She's smiling like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> yes, welcome. Happy to have you. Is there anyone worship, worshiping with us for the first time online? You can't tell me. Yes, I, I bid you a special welcome to them also. All right, so let, let us also acknowledge the presence of Sister Relid. Thank you, Relid, for being here and leading us through this different sermon. It's something different. And truly, we appreciate it. And it must continue. It's not easy to go out and witness, don't it? No, it's not easy. Um, if you have been in sales as long as I have been, you know it's not easy. All right, so... Just think about that. But we have to train ourselves and get it done. All right, so let me acknowledge the birthday people. Uh, so on February 25, you have, which is today, right? Yeah, Romy Ball. Please stand when you hear your name. Kimberly Watson and um, Max, what's this? Max, Max Lean Chambers. On the 26th, Reverend Marjorie Dona, and I know she's not here. Um, Jovan Coote, 
Khalil, Khalil Mackenzie and Leseth Brown on the 27th, and on the 28th, Camelia Kut Massaqua. I think I got that right. Whew. Okay, no one here for birthday? Oh, this gentleman here, uh, what's his name? Khalil Mackenzie. Okay, so please let's sing birthday wishes for Khalil and the others. Thank you very much. Happy birthday to everyone. So will he come forward to his, for his birthday blessing? Sister Reddit. Anyone traveling? There are no recorded um, anniversaries. But uh, is there anyone celebrating anniversary in the church at this time? Please put up your hand. Okay. All right. <laughs> come forward. Thank you, Sister Relate. All right, um, continuing the notices. So our morning prayers continue on Zoom at 6.30 a.m. next week. As you know, tomorrow is the local government election and the office will be open from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and will be closed for the day thereafter. Uh, Wednesday, is our prayer meeting from 4.30 to 6.15 p.m. And of course, Thursday, we continue with choir practice at 7 p.m. And please be reminded that the benefit play, Patrick Brown's Peakview Heights, will be on Sunday, March 24, at the Courtly Auditorium at 5 p.m. And the cost for tickets is $3,000 and proceeds will go in aid of purchasing a new piano, which we badly need. Uh, there will be no Bible study on Monday, tomorrow. Um, yes, because of Election Day. Uh, let me, on behalf of the church, offer condolences to our sister, Joan Duncan, and our sisters, Joan Duncan and Renee Gale, on the death of her brother and uncle, Bruce Duncan. And let me, on behalf of the Brotherhood of St. Mark's Church in Mandeville, express their appreciation, appreciation for your kind reception and warm hospitality during their visit last week, Sunday. They were very happy with, it, with, with, with everything, and they have pledged to visit again, if we so desire. <laughs> in fact, they have done about nine plays or presentations and they want to share it with the world. Of course, please continue to support our Easter Monday Fair and of, for further information, please con um, contact Mrs. Byrne Edwards and ask her to come forward just to give us a, a brief update on, on the Easter Fair. Yes, Brother Tyne. You want to you want to preempt, Mrs. Edwards? <laughs> okay. One second. Come, come um, some of you know that I've heard about the little 15 year old boy who died last Sunday on a motorcade, political motorcade. He happens to be the brother of one of the children who I teach at Sunday school, Shamel the Gray. Um, right now, things are not nice, so can you keep the family and that era in your prayers? Because it is said that um, there was a reprisal. So let's hope for peace and for safety for those children and their families. Thank you. 
Thank you. Sorry. Well, thank you. Good morning, church. So far, our fair is on track. Things are on track. If you notice, we have the banner there. Thanks to Mr. Huntley, Mr. Tyne, and the team who worked hard under pressure to get it up. <laughs> Not going to deny, under pressure. Yes. We also have uh, some flyers. There are two on the notice board there, one here. I have a few under that. What I have today, they are in black and white. We, the tickets are going out. All the groups will have their tickets today. And I'm asking all persons to take tickets from their group leader so that we don't double up. Mother's Union, AWA, B Brotherhood, the choir, AYF, and the Sunday School. If you haven't gotten it in your hand yet, I have them right there. Please take your tickets from your group leader. And also, I have tickets for the congregation who are not a part of any group. I'm not sure if I saw Digna. Digna oh, she is here. So I have her tickets for those who are not a part of any group at all. Take your tickets from Digna. I also have the pledge forms available for those who did not receive. Please collect your pledge form before you leave today. I have a mini survey to do right now, especially for the young at hearts. Do you know VR? You know what is VR? No? What it is? It's a game, right? Do you like that game? Come on, I need to hear you. No? What about the adults? Do you know VR? No? Don't know myself. De Diane, please come and save me. Diana, where is she? Where's Diana? Come and save me. Virtual reality, it's a game. Please, please explain. So, so virtual reality is one of those games you put on the, the, the glasses and you play on a computer and it seems real. So, hope you'll come out and enjoy it on Easter Monday. Yeah. No, I want to know if we are in for this game because it's a little expensive. And we don't want to engage persons to come here and uh, it is not taken up. So that's why I wanted to f have a feel of, you know, how much do you know it and what decisions we should take to have this game available. All right. So thank you very much. If you need pledge form or the flyers, please Come to me for it and go to your leaders for the tickets. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Burton Edwards. So we have two, two quick activities. I'd like to call Father Paul, ask him to come forward. I have a special gift for him from the children of Clifton. Sorry, Clifton Sunday School. He says, Happy Valentine's Day. And uh, it says here, Happy Valentine's Day to Minister Sharp and Mrs. Sharp. We love you from all of us from Clifton Sunday School. And it's signed by, I believe, about 15 persons, thereabout.
just to say the work continues. I know we'll call for Sister Sharon to, pre to present the prizes for the Sunday School. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We're very happy this morning to share with you um, just some the, the event of showering our children with prizes for having participated in Sunday School in 2023. That was the first full year post-COVID. And so we were, we were minded to ensure that we keep all the activities to reinforce for the children that there is reward after good work. And so after this first year back, we are able to identify can children who will be given some prizes. Now, everybody cannot get a prize simply because, you know, it's hard to do that and we don't have the money to do that, but we know that you are all wonderful children who work hard, who study your Bible verses, just that some people may just be a little bit ahead of you. So I want the congregation, I invite you now, congregation, to please just put your hands together and just big up the Sunday school. Just let them know that they are special, that they work hard, that we appreciate the fact that they are coming out and that they are participating in Sunday school. So we're going to be awarding prizes to just three groups today. We're going to be awarding prizes to the pre-primary group, those are the babies, and the teachers for that group are Auntie Lurleen, Auntie Dimsey, and Auntie Sandra. And uh, for the primary group, the teachers are Aunties Lorna, Norma, and Lola. And the juniors, the teachers are Auntie Sharika and Auntie Claudette. And so those are the groups that we're awarding today. So the big people are looking at me and say, so we'll talk. All right. We're got, these are the three groups we're um, awarding today. We're going to invite our sister, um, sister Colette Sharp, wife of our priest, to come and um, give the prizes up for us. And I notice that we have somebody ready to be paparazzi. We joined the school. Karen, is your phone giver? Is she deputizing for you? We're accustomed to you. Being paparazzi, you know. All righty. And so the first prize for attendance goes to Danielle Francis. Let's put our hands together for Danielle. <laughs> for participation, Azuri Mitchell. But I don't think Azuri is here today. Most improved is Zion Lawful. I don't think I see Zion here today. And for behavior, Renelia Smith. I'm not seeing Renelia. Is Renelia here? She's not here today. Well, she'll, so she'll get it next week when she comes. Great. Let's move on to the second group, the primary group. Attendance, Shania Thompson. I, uh, oh, I, I, I am dyslexic. Something. It's just the, uh, the sun that kept today. My apologies, Shania. So you see, Auntie Norma is reminding me so we know that it is right in the book. Come, Sh <laughs> Come Shania. My apologies for <laughs> making a mistake with your name. For participation, it's um, Madison Rattray, but I'm not seeing Madison today. For improvement, it's Ariana Watson. Is Ariana in church today? You have to give her a bigger clip, Linda. That's a, that's a great achievement. Wonderful acknowledgement. Ariana has come so far. Good job, Ariana. And for behavior, Raekwon Smith. And Raekwon is not here today. And we'll move on to the older ones now, to the juniors. For attendance, Amelia Clare. <clears throat> for 
participation, Khadija Roberts. You know that, right? <laughs> For improvement, Zachary Wong, but Zachary is not in church today. And behavior, Emily Clare. Great job. Thank you very much, Sister Colette. Congratulations to all our children. Thank you very much, Auntie Norma, for all the work that you did. Thank you very much, Sister Sharon. You did that quickly as promised. And, and so, friends, we end on a bit of a sad note. So yesterday, we were, as I was watching the Gibson release, it was announced that Hubert Lawrence, well-known commentator in athletics, had passed. And uh, I've since learned this morning that his body was actually discovered by our sister Sharon, Hooray. Karen, sorry, who is a neighbor of his. And so we just want you to take some time now and for the rest of the week just to keep her in your prayer because that's a, quite a sad thing to happen, to have happened to anyone. I just want you to keep her in your prayer. Sister Rillet, I hand over back to you. Thank you very much. Those are the notices. The closing hymn, hymn number 465, 465. Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord.